Good morning, traders. It is 4.14 a.m. on Wednesday, November 25th. I've already taken my two trades for the pre-market. I'm all done trading until the market opens. I got everything on video, so let's go over the two trades. This is the first one. It is on uh, JFU, which popped up on the top gainers list. I'm going to have to say that um, I shouldn't have really entered this trade. There was, you know, I met my criteria in some respects and then others not. Um, so I got, I, uh, got up basically right before four, so I didn't have really enough time to situate myself and, um, review the plan and that's never a good thing. So the problem with this, you know, the reason why I got in was one, because it was on the top gainers. It ran up in the over, uh, in the aftermarket. It, it consolidated at the end of the aftermarket, then it popped up here. Um, and a lot of times this works out for me. But um, one thing that could have kept me out is that the daily chart didn't look good. And as soon as I entered, I realized it. And you can see me um, hover my cursor over it in just a second here. So I should have rejected it just based on the daily chart. There. I'm like, whoops, this was stupid. <laughs> and... Um, my stop loss was the bottom of this candle or the break of the bottom of this first candle since I entered on this one. And the reason I entered was because this candle broke the high of this one. So some, you know, a lot of times I'll say, especially if other things look good, that means that the run up is going to continue. But of course, not always, but that's why I got in. <clears throat> So let's fast forward because I think it chops around a little bit. Yeah, it takes some time to, uh, so that you see it prints a couple of candles there down by the bottom. So I'm thinking well, it might, re might reverse, but you know, I'm not that hopeful. This is not a good sign at all. And there, there it hits my stop and I get out. So at least I followed my plan. Um, and then I don't even look at like my P and L on that because I don't really want to be, of course I'm a little bummed because I lost the trade. But I don't want to have any like uh, preconceived notions going into the next trade. Um, the second trade is also on this video, so I think you can even see me um, look for it. Some of these are old. Um, some of those on the watch list are old. So my watch list. This is the weird thing with uh, Weeble is it sometimes it works on this computer and not on my laptop and other times it works on my laptop and not on this computer like only when the sessions first change and you can see right here there was nothing really showing up in the pre-market so right now I'm, I was looking at my um, my laptop there and uh, I just added uh, which was it YJ now YJ looks good on the daily chart and I did notice that right away uh, oh wait, I guess maybe was YJ not the one that, so let's go, uh, let's fast forward here. Okay, yeah, yeah, MKD. Oh, I just noticed, <laughs> man, I must have missed that. Oh, no, no, yeah, this one doesn't, doesn't, uh, pass the daily chart test either. So, shame on me. Although this one was a winning trade, but that doesn't make it okay. I mean, this, this does look awfully good. It would have been hard not to, uh, not to trade it. So the idea here is, um, I was hoping for like, you know, a, a legit pullback and then, um, get in for the break of the high of a one minute candle. Now this is a higher float stock. I think it was around 100, 110 million shares. So these moves aren't quite as big, but this whole move is like 30 cents in like three minutes. So that's, that's why I got in. If this whole move was like five or six cents, I would not have bothered. And that happens sometimes with those higher floats. <clears throat> now I'm just checking out like stop loss areas. Um, so I, this candle had it matched the high of this one 169 so as soon as I see 170 I'm in and then my stop loss is the low of this candle which is a nice tight stop so if I lose this trade I'm not gonna lose much so I got in exactly at 170 which is where I want I immediately sold out um, at uh, 176 because my my um, 
plan is to sell half at 1R and since my stop loss was um, let's just go back really quick here to see the range of that candle um, you know what I miscalculated there so my stop loss it was a nine cent stop so I should have waited until uh, 179 so I got out a little bit early on that that first um, sell half and I may have well, I don't want to give it away but, uh, so that's probably that 178 is uh, and then the next okay so that that's the first half so actually that was very close because it was at 178 and uh, that's about 1R it's just that I got filled at 176 because it bounced a little bit um, so now I'm holding half my shares and the only um, let's see I would sell all if it came back down and hit my entry because I don't want to give back way back the profit that I made um, I don't really like that it's shaking around like that and not just going straight up so I sell half again here I just got a three at 175 so which isn't great but it, it's still five cents on the move and you see it comes down so it could have come down and stopped me out but uh I don't know maybe I'm making excuses for selling out <laughs> but I was pretty comfortable I was more comfortable holding three shares than six you know uh, if it if I was holding the six and it came back down to my entry and I sold there I would have been a little bit bummed So this is like one quarter of my original position size. So here I was a little bit concerned that, you know, okay, it's not going to go. Then it starts to run. And since there was all that shakiness, um, I guess I sold one more share again when I saw that that pop and I think I end up selling the rest um, pretty quickly because I just don't f feel that strongly about this um, the stock at this point for a couple of reasons you know one is that where I got in isn't really a true pullback it's I guess you can call it a micro pullback or something you know getting in just after one one red candle but you know this is still part of the overall um, trend up so I think pretty quickly okay so then all right so Actually, yeah, I didn't realize there was another candle. So this thing gave me a bottom that I could sell out on if it hit. But uh, I just, the way this thing was kind of curling flat, I just didn't see a lot of, a lot more potential in it. So as soon as it gave me a pop um, up, I sold. Yeah, I guess I was trying to get some of that, um, that last pop, but I got filled at 178. And then here comes my um, P&L for the morning which is down 42 cents because that first stock I lost a dollar 14 on and the second one I got 72 cents um, the only thing I don't know is if I would have sold like if I would have played that thing textbook I don't think I would have made much more if any more money I just want to see really quick um, I got another monitor up so my mouse is kind of moving around uh, let's see here you can see it just kind of sold off and went flat now <clears throat> so I got in at 170 for the break of that candle and the lows 161 so my um, true 1R would be 9 cent move and that would be um, 6 times 9 which is 54 cents of course the minus 2 for selling so it's really 52 cents 
and then um, my next play after that like textbook is um, after the uh, one minute candles make a high then I sell when they break the bottom so then the next sell for the remaining six shares would have been let's see the low of this candle is 176 to this yeah this hit 175 so then I would have sold at 175 so that's five cents so that's another 30 cents minus two so that's 28 28 cents so 72 and 8 so that's 80 cents so if I would have played it by the book I would have made 80 cents which is more than I made which that's pretty typical usually when we try to manage our trades and not just follow the plan we end up making less money than um, than if we just uh, trade the plan exactly um, so you know that's my fault so I left eight cents basically on the table because uh, because I, I tried to manage it which is a really almost like 10% or it is about 10% of the of the trade so that's something and that's something that I gotta gotta work on but um, I definitely was like a little bit uh, spooked after losing that first trade and losing you know a decent amount for me so the total uh, loss for the morning is 42 cents so it's still green on the week but now you know it's getting close to uh, to break even and if I took like another hit like that I would be in the red so I gotta I don't know like I, I say this stuff but I don't want it to get in my head either because I don't want to trade with that in mind I just want to keep taking the setups that I take and uh, let the chips fall where they may so like that first that first setup other than the daily chart thing that's the trade that I would take um, every morning because you, for me at least more often than not it's worked out um, for example on MKD it would have worked out if I would have seen that one um, because like you know if I saw this candle form although the volume there's kind of light um, I may, may have jumped in there but um, and then for the break of this candle that's basically where I got in and I, and I made money on that so uh, it's just that first trade didn't work out and that's that happens sometimes I like I like these entries because you're getting in at the beginning of the move at least in the morning obviously these a lot of these stocks have you know run up in the aftermarket although this one didn't do that much so anyway hope you guys got something out of this and uh, I'll see you in the at the market open <laughs>